Hey guys, my name is Pedron and I'm a professional practice assistant professor in finance. I'm also a CFA charter holder. This is another episode of my crash course in machine learning concepts, Simply Explained. All right, in parts one and two, we covered the difference between machine learning and statistical learning. We also formally defined the concepts of machine learning itself. In part three, we covered different types of machine learning algorithm. And in this episode, we will cover machine learning models and evaluation metrics. Okay, now let's see why do we need a model? Basically, you wanna see how we can quantify the pattern in the data, or in other terms, how the machine will be able to learn from the data. For that, we need to have a model. Now let's see what are the ingredients for that model, for that machine learning model, right? So imagine we come up with a functional form like this, and for now, we're not going to specify any the, you know, constraints on that functional form. It says that your, our y is a function of x and theta plus some epsilon. So why we need to add some errors? Because we know that there is no true model out there and the data comes with, with noise. So for that reason, we need to have an epsilon in the model as well, right? So the left-hand side variable, or y, it's our response variable, or dependent variable, or basically this is our apple. In machine learning language, we call it the target. The x's are the predictors, or the in independent variables, and it's a vector of many features, right? We call them inputs, or machine learning algorithm. Uh, in machine learning language, we call them features. And then finally, thetas are the estimates, or specification, or the parameters of the model. Later on, we're going to talk about hyperparameters as well, but, but uh, we don't necessarily show it here. Okay, so let's see in a supervised learning models, what, what are we talking about? Remember, if this is my supervised model, then I have some inputs. It's a vector of features and we have outputs as well. So both the inputs and outputs are given. And the, and the machine is going to learn the pattern by quantifying this f of x, right? f of x and theta, you can think. So it's all about estimating the, that f, that unobserved relationship between variables, unobserved pattern between variables uh, by f hat, right? So basically the machine is going to learn by estimating this f hat, right? And it's going to, do that for two purposes. One, we use uh, we, we do this estimation to make some inferences, right? Basically, this is the interpretable part of machine learning. We want to become a storyteller. We want to see bit, quantify the relationship with variables themselves. And another reason is to make some predictions. We need to have f hat to at the end of the day be able to make predictions for new set of data that the model has not seen before. So in machine learning application and machine learning, basically the we are focusing more than 90% of times on this predictability part, right? If you watch part one of these video lecture videos, you will see that we talk about the difference between machine learning versus statistical learning. But this doesn't mean that we cannot use machine learning for interpretation, right? So if, if you use less complex models, we can come up with interpretable machine learning, and uh, then we can use basically machine learning for interpretation. But as I said before, it is mostly used for making predictions. Okay, what are the parameters and hyperparameters? Let me give you a very simple example that you should be familiar with, and then we can see what are the parameters and hyperparameters. Imagine I'm regressing Y, and I'm using a very simple polynomial regression model, right? So there's a constant plus theta one X plus theta 2 x squared plus, let's say, theta d x to the power of d. And of course, adding some noise, okay? What are the parameters in this model? The parameters are the thetas. So I have theta 0, theta 1, and etc. So these are the parameters, param. What is the hyperparameter? In this specific model, the degree of polynomial is going to be my hyperparameter. Does all the models, all the machine learning models have hyperparameter? No, right? So, the, but this specific one has. For those models that have hyperparameters, just be aware that this number is going to be initially set by the user itself manually. And then down the road, it's going to be optimized. 
So the parameters are estimated from the data automatically. By automatically, I mean by doing an optimization, right? And model hyperparameters are set manually prior to training the model. So this means that when we say an algorithm learned the pattern, it means it calculated the parameters, right? So model training happens when the parameters are solved for. So here we get the best model parameters. Let's show them with theta star. And then down in the process, we are going to tune the hyperparameters, the ones that we start with initial number. So let's say I started with d is equal to four, and then we, we train the model, the thetas were learned, and then in, when it comes to testing the model, during that process, we call it cross-validation. By using cross-validation, we are going to optimize the hyperparameters themselves. But these are some topics that we are going to cover in the future parts. For now, just remember, when the model is training using a train set, the thetas are going to be optimal. And after that, we are going to optimize the hyperparameters themselves and figure out what is the best number in this example for the polynomial degree. Okay. Now let's talk about parametric versus non-parametric models, right? Remember the true relationship, that unobservable f of x is unknown. And the goal is to see which machine learning algorithm is better at approximating that unobservable function, right? That f of x. An algorithm is going to learn or estimate that f of x from the training data. So basically it's going to figure out what is f hat of x, or we can add it f hat of x and theta. And basically by training, we mean the theta stars has been cleared, right? Okay, now let's see what is the difference between parametric model and non-parametric model and how we define them actually. So when this f of x that you're trying to estimate, if you impose some restrictions on it, if you make some assumption about a functional form, we call that model parametric, right? So in a parametric model, f of x is assumed. So what are the advantages of doing that? So it's going to be simpler, right? It's easier to understand and interpret. This is important. If you wanted to have an interpretable machine learn machine, uh, well, model, then you may better use parametric model. Not all the parametric models are interpretable though, but it's, it's a lot more interpretable than the non-parametric model. It is going to be faster, uh, basically because there's a functional form. So sometimes there's a closed form solution for the optimization and the, the algorithm is going to go over the, to figure out what are the answers a lot faster. And for that, it's going to require less data, right? And um, so these are the advantages. What is the disadvantage of parametric models? Basically, they're limited complexity. Because we are imposing some construction, some restrictions, we are, we are imposing some specific form, the parametric algorithms are basically more suited for simple problems where you can guess or you have some prior belief that what's the structure in the data. What are the examples of parametric models? We can think of linear regression, you know, GLM or logistic regression, simple neural networks, and some other models that down the road we're going to explore all of them. These are kind of parametric models, right? And parametric does not, has not necessarily mean that there are parameters or not hyperparameters. It has something to do with that functional form that you're making an assumption about. Okay. So non-parametric models, and as you can guess, if f of x is not assumed, basically if you're not imposing any restrictions on the functional form of f of x, then we call it non-parametric. Okay. This basically means that the model is free to learn any functional form, right? So the examples are for example, k nearest neighbors, you know, class, um, classification and regression trees, random forests, SVMs, you know, artificial neural networks, and etc. These are the examples of the non-parametric algorithms. So, what are the advantages? Well, as you can guess, flexibility. It can fit a large number of functional forms, so which doesn't need to be assumed. So, this these models tend to be more flexible, and for that reason, they're going to perform better. Not necessarily but on average they usually perform better than parametric model because they're more flexible and at the same time this comes at a cost what are the costs it's going to be slower because there is no close form solution for these models so we have to use some gradient descent optimizers solvers and the, their families maybe and for that reason we need to re require more data and it's going to be slower the, the the learning process is going to be slower because we're dealing with more data and 
these non-parametric models tends to overfit compared to parametric models, right? So they overfit more than non-parametric models, simply because the model is complex, it's more flexible, and if you don't control for the overfitting, it can, they can simply overfit to the train data. All right. Now that we know what are the machine learning models and what's, what are the ingredients, let's talk about how we can compare those models with each other, right? Basically, let's talk about evaluation metrics. In general, we want to compare how close are the predictions of a model to the actual numbers in the test set, in a set that the model has not seen before, okay? And here's a list of evaluation metrics for classification and regression. We're going to talk about the details of these uh, terms down the road in future parts, but for now, you can just uh, look at this laundry list of the performance metrics. So, for example, in classification, we can report confusion metrics and accuracy, precision, recall. We talk about F score, uh, AUC, ROC, you know, log loss, Gini coefficients, and etc. And when it comes to regression, we can report you know, mean absolute error, mean squared error, uh, root mean squared error, uh, and etc. Okay, but as I said before, we're going to talk about the details of all these performance metrics down the road. But typically, in regression analysis, we are interested to report the MSE or RMSE, and for classification analysis, we will be reporting some rate for uh, misclassification rate for quantitative responses. Right? Okay. Let's wrap up this episode by going over the question of the day. Here is a list of very basic machine learning models out there, both in terms of supervised and unsupervised algorithm. And I want you to think about the, that either of these models that you see, is it parametric or non-parametric, right? And uh, so it's okay if you don't know the answer right now because we're going to cover all these models down the road. But for the models that you have heard or you know of, you know, you know the, their functional form or whatever, I want you to think uh, that either are they parametric or non-parametric. And if they are, uh, and what are the parameters and hyperparameters if they have, okay? So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care.